what we're going to be going through here is the depletion of natural resources and just looking at the general guidelines that we'd be using here for determining the depletion base here and what we mean by the depletion depletion base here. It acts as an accumulated depreciation account here on our natural resource. And what we're going to be going through here is just a basic example here for an oil drilling company here. So for example here, Corporation A is an oil drilling company. It leased property here on which oil has been discovered. Now the oil produced here for the year 20X1 was 18,000 barrels. The average sales price here for the year was $130 per barrel. And the total estimated barrels on this property here uh, is 250,000 barrels. Now the lease provision here has an outright payment to the lessor or the owner here of the property of 1,200,000 annual rental payment here uh, again of 63,000 here to the lessor and then a premium per barrel here to the lessor would be 5% of the barrel's uh, selling price here of $130 per barrel here. And then we have a cleanup and restoration that's required here after uh, we're done with this site here. The oil company has to clean up their site here. So let's just look at our cost per barrel and in, in not including our operating cost here. And this is how we uh, calculated our depletion, depletion expense here on and our depletion cost here on a per unit barrel here per basis here. So we have an initial payment here of $1,200,000 divided by the total amount here of uh, estimated barrels of oil on this site of 250000 is going to give us a cost here of $4.80 here per barrel. And then we have the annual rental payment for uh, the year here, $63,000 per year divided by, in this case, we had 18,000 barrels here for this year here. So that in as for three dollars and fifty cents here and then the premium per barrel here that was five percent times our selling price of 130 dollars per barrel for six dollars and fifty cents here and then we have to include this to restore the land here that's sixty thousand dollars here at the end of the lease here divided by the total amount of um, estimated barrels that we have for this site here of two hundred fifty thousand here gives us 24 cents per barrel so our total cost here per barrel for 20x1 is fifteen dollars and four cents and that would be our depletion uh, depletion cost here in a per unit basis and essentially that was our total cost here um, minus any salvage value here uh, it divided by our total estimated units available and we did this here either for the total amount here for the um, that we were going to estimated on this site here of 250,000. We also did it on a yearly basis here for when we use our annual amounts here at $18,000 per barrel. So anyway, that's just a basic example here. It doesn't include any drilling costs and all the rest here. But let's just go and look at what we're talking about on these guidelines here. Now establishing the depletion base here, the factors that would be included here is one, the acquisition cost of the resource. Number two, any exploration exploration costs here, number three developmental costs here, and then number four restoration costs. So what do we mean by each one of these? So first for acquisition costs. Now if, they're, if it's successful you would include it here in this depletion base. If unsuccessful then uh, it, often it's written off here as a loss here. So number one for our acquisition costs, the right to search and find an undiscovered natural resource here. Uh, number two, the price paid for an already discovered resource or three here the lease payments for property containing the resource here number four royalty payments to the owner of the property so that's what would be included in our acquisition costs here now we have our exploration costs here and the costs needed to find this resource here number one when substantial you can capitalize in the depletion depletion base here and number two some companies just expense these costs here and that's for our ex exploration costs here. Now for our development costs we have both tangible and intangible so number one intangible equipment costs that they do not normally include in the depletion base you just depreciate them over the useful life and expense them here. Number two here intangible development costs uh, quite often they're part here of the depletion base here. So that takes care of our development costs here. Now restoration costs here. Uh, number one, this is where you restore the property to its natural state and that's part of the depletion base here and it's based on the fair value to restore this, um, restore it to its natural state here. So we've just gone through uh, defining our 
of four different items here. Uh, let's just go over them again here. Acquisition cost here, what would be included. Exploration cost, what would be included here. And our development costs, uh, what again, what would be included here. And our restoration costs. So we got those four different uh, I, I, uh, what would be have to be uh, established here and determine what would be going into the depletion base. Those are the four different factors that we'd be looking at here. And then uh, let's just say for our example here, uh, this is, uh, let's just go here where uh, for 20x1 on that uh, basic example that we looked at, how we would uh, uh, record our accumulated depletion here, which is acts as a, uh, uh, it reduces the carrying value of this oil field here that we leased and that we're uh, using here for 20x1 for the oil that we take and out of it. So, and then uh, that this acts as a, uh, again, this is a contra asset account to uh, whatever we have capitalized here in the cost of this oil field. And then number two, we have this other account here. And, uh, and the accumulated depletion account here is on our balance sheet. And then on our income statement here, we have would recognize a depletion expense here for the year here, a 20x1. And that acts, acts as our cost of goods sold. So what would be included here would be uh, for this year 20x1 here where we had we estimated the total cost per barrel here of the depletion was fifteen dollars and four cents times in this case we extracted eighteen thousand barrels out of the site here for year 20x1 and that gives us a total uh, cost here of 200 or expense here of two hundred and seventy thousand seven hundred and twenty dollars so that act uh, goes into our accumulated depletion here for this uh, for the year here for this oil field here and then we recognize it as a depletion expense here on our income statement here assuming we uh, in this case we assume we sold all these barrels here and you would do that based on your sales here and just one other thing here um, what we've done here is we rewrite off the resource base that's the cost of the depletion here and in this case we use the units of production method and it's an activity approach here and it's a function of the number of units extracted during the period here and uh, that would be on a cost per unit of production and it's also based on the sales that we'd have here for the year so if we didn't have the sales we probably wouldn't have recognized our depletion expense here but had we we sold all these barrels here these 18 thousand barrels for the year so we recognize it here as a depletion expense otherwise it would be uh, again sitting in our accumulated depletion account here but it would be also be sitting in our inventory account all right so that just takes care of the an overview here of what would and let's go back up at up at here one one more time here this is just an over here overview of establishing a depletion base here and the factors that would be included and these are for natural resources here again our acquisition cost we went through that exploration cost here development costs and also this restoration cost all right so that takes care of that for our depletion of natural resources here and our general guidelines that we'd be use here, using here for determining our depletion base here.